to our place, our bar. It's like cheers. Here we go. Hey, welcome to Coffee Talk Tuesday via Zoom. We are trying it for the first time with Trip, and we have our lovely guest, Crystal Ewart. Did I say it right, Crystal? You did. Yes. <laughs> Love when I get those last names right. <laughs> And um, I've got my Coffee Talk Tuesday mug right here. Awesome. That's not... <laughs> if your Coffee Talk Tuesday mug is probably to your right. <laughs> ah, this isn't it. No. <laughs> I don't want to know what that is. Well, I haven't used it yet, but at the end of the show, we'll see what's in there. <laughs> well, I got I to gotta say, like, we are filming on a Thursday, and one of my favorite things to do on Thursday is go to Crystal's Bar. She's the owner of Good Spirits Dive Bar. Or, I don't, is it Good Spirits Dive Bar? Is that no, the that's, name? Just, that's just the email. <laughs> Good Spirits Bar. Thursdays, we go, and we have Thirsty Thursday with the girls. And um, today we're having Thirsty Thursday. I'm having wine in my coffee again for the second week in a row in my Coffee Talk Tuesday <laughs> month. So, cheers. And Crystal, what are you drinking at this point? I'm not. My I'm God, not. you're a bar owner who doesn't drink? Yeah. Do you drink at work? Sometimes. <laughs> okay. Not when I, no, not when I'm working. <laughs> That's your story and you're sticking to it. Yeah. Okay. First and third days are different. <laughs> Right, Shalise. Right. She's not on the clock. She waits until after she gets her business done. She's very professional about it. So I used to uh, have an office next to Carol's Cove, which was truly the worst bar in all of Salt Lake. Yeah. I asked the owner one time, I said, how is this 0.05 DUI thing going to affect your customers? And she said, we've never had a customer below 0.10. <laughs> is that the same with your crowd? <laughs> No, but I believe that with that with Carol's Cove. <laughs> that was the biggest dive. I used to be able to take my dog in there, and they would leave snacks for my dog, and it never affected anything. Food. I, I don't think inspectors ever went in there. Wow. Well, so well. tell me about your bar. So Good Spirits was originally, well, years ago, Good Spirits was originally where the um, big IMC hospital is now. Um, it, Good Spirits has been around for probably 30 plus years. Um, about 16 years ago, when the hospital was built, they moved it over to 33rd South and 10th West. About two years ago, we got noticed that we had to move out of there because they were building the homeless shelter right behind us. And so a year ago, it was a year ago in February, we moved to West Jordan. And that's I, when I purchased the bar. I have driven by the old, old location every time on the way to hockey. Yeah. You had a tough crowd in there, didn't you? No. Tell me about some of your favorite. It wasn't too bad. Once in a while we'd get a few, but I think most people were more afraid to come in there because it was so close to the police station. So <laughs> we, we didn't get a lot of people in there a lot of times. And people would say, where do you work? And I would tell them and they'd laugh and say, well, I'm not coming in there because it's too close to the police station. They could just walk me down. <laughs> but yeah, but now we're in West Jordan. It's a lot better. It's a lot bigger. It's a lot nicer. Um, a lot of new people, a lot of the old people followed us over but we're kind of out of the way for a lot of them. So most of it's new crowd. So the cool thing about Good Spirits, um, first of all, I didn't even know about it but at first, but we moved in. I moved into my place right now, like within a week before you guys opened. Like our anniversary is almost the same day. So really? that was really fun. Like when I went to celebrate your anniversary for the bar, I was celebrating my anniversary for moving into the neighborhood as well. So that was fun. But it wasn't until like, what was it? Like six months later, I think October, September, October, when um, my boyfriend at the time decided that he needed to um, check out the neighborhood and he found you. So uh, <laughs> shout out to him for yeah. making this my community little place to go to. So it's my, <laughs> it's my like coffee shop slash bar slash... Uh, now my, it, we're planning a fundraiser for some time this summer. Hopefully we can still do it at the end of June. If not, then we can maybe push it a few weeks. This whole coronavirus has us all in 
shambles, that's for sure. Yeah, it does, for sure. So that's why I had you on today, though, because I want to hear your take, because you had to shut down your bar. You have, um, I think you said 15 different, um, 15 employees total. Um, and so what, what happened? Like, how was, how was the lead up to that? How are you feeling about that? What's going on? How are your employees? Well, there wasn't a big lead up to that. I heard it from the governor um, the day it was going to happen. It was a Monday, um, the 16th of March. I didn't realize I Governor Herbert drinks and goes out to bars <laughs> regularly. That was nice of him. Yeah, to call your place. <laughs> Neither did I. <laughs> Don't start that rumor. We'll be in trouble. <laughs> That's why he's no. not running for re-election. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he, yeah, his his address, how about that? His address <laughs> on the TV is how I found out. <laughs> um, and we had to shut the doors that day at 11 p.m. Um, a lot of people came down that night. I think everybody heard about it. So everybody wanted to get one last little hurrah. Except for me. I was sad, but I... I I stayed strong and I stayed away, but I did send love. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> it was nice to have the support and everybody, you know, it was kind of, it was a somber night because there's nobody knows. We don't know. They told me, well, and then Wednesday, two days after the shutdown, the, um, the Department of Health called me. And said, we just wanted to make sure that you got the information. And I said, well, yeah, <laughs> two days. I guess I could have stayed open two more days and said no. But, <laughs> but um, he called and I asked him, I said, what, what's going on? Because I've heard two weeks, I've heard 30 days, I've heard 60 days. How long? And he said, right now it's at 30 days. Granted, that was on April 18th. So, or March 18th. So now... We don't know. I'm not getting any answers. I'm not getting any. Nobody's reaching out and letting us know anything. I think it's all just we're. This is so new. Nobody knows. Yeah. We're playing it by ear. So how are your employees doing? What What are you What are you doing? Um, or what have you been able to do? Because I know there are some resources and there are some some things that are just passed actually um, or or are passing right away um, for help with that? Have you been able to tap into any of those to, Nothing to help? There. Nothing no. Else. So unfortunately, they're not unfortunately for the other states, but unfortunately for everyone involved, they're hit, they're going, they're opening all of these resources up to the, the hardest hit state states first. Mm -hmm. I know Alaska just opened up for the, the loan that they're going to forgive. As long as you pay your employees, they'll grant you up to $20,000, I believe it is, to help pay your rent, your utilities, pay your employees. Um, and then at the end of this all, they'll just forgive the whole loan. Wow, that's cool. I, I've tried and I've tried. I've contacted my banker. Nobody has any information on it yet. Um, um, just so you know, and I, I did send you this message, but um, one of my instructors at Salt Lake Community College is is really heavy into helping he's a he's a business lawyer he's got like multiple small businesses and he helps run multiple small businesses and he's actually putting together a whole he's drafting up this whole thing on new resources that that are out there for small businesses specifically for utah so I saw your email. Yeah, yeah there's so a lot there of what video actually that i i should paste that or uh, copy and paste that video onto the information here just so small business owners who are watching this can also go and, and apply for these, these grants and stuff as well. Right. Right. They don't even, it's really frustrating because you, they keep saying it just now before we came on um, the podcast, I was watching governor Herbert was talking again and he said, it's not here yet, but it's coming. It's not here yet, but it's coming. And like for unemployment, um, so many of our bar staff, and restaurant staff they work for pennies really two dollars and 13 15 cents an hour plus tips so yeah. even on employment i have one employee who is getting 111 dollars a week in unemployment and wow. who can survive on that you know yeah 
Oh man, that's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. So it's hard. It's hard. And, I, and I've been trying, I set up a GoFundMe to help out my employees. Um, several of them, this is their only income. Um, single parents and some of them have a spouse that's still working and second jobs or first jobs. And this was their second job, but, but so right. many of them, this is their only income. So I, I have set up a GoFundMe and I'm trying to help them as much as I can, yeah. but it's hard. Yeah. We're going to, we're also going to have the, the GoFundMe link there. So anybody out there that wants to help with your local community bar that actually does a lot for the community and has hosted a lot of fundraising events and is super supportive of of other women in business like me <laughs> and, and helping their, my nonprofit. And I know that, you know, other places. So for one, you are super awesome in helping the community. So that's why I wanted to have you on so I can give back in any way that I can. And hopefully you get a little more from this as well. Thank so, you. you yeah, we try. Yeah. We no try to about it where we can. So well, we're I've, got an, I've got an idea for you now. This okay. is, a brilliant idea. I see you wearing Utah regalia. Yes. And you're probably a Utah bar where you everyone gets together and watch the Utes play. We do. That's a genius idea. <laughs> Why don't you become the first bar in the world for BYU supporters? <laughs> Did you say BYU? Sorry. BYU. Yeah. <laughs> I don't so, know. Well, that, I don't, that doesn't sound like a very good business plan. <laughs> oh, no, no, you will be the only bar that alcoholic Mormons can go to to support the right. BYU. Oh, don't no. you worry. They come now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a great idea. You can be the one. I mean, regardless, you will get a lot of publicity. Uh, that's true. Good Actually, and bad, probably. <laughs> Funny story about that. My, um, so my brother, well, ex-brother-in-law but he's also a dear friend of mine he is and he grew up LDS but he's not LDS but he is one of the biggest BYU supporter uh, football fans ever mm -hmm. and it's so funny because like he's not <laughs> I don't even know if he believes in God let alone any religion but he loves BYU sports team and that's just that's just his thing and it's I think it's almost because it's like taboo and it's like huh? so not something that you know should traditional be more for traditional like for that. someone like him <laughs> so so it's super it's super funny so you never know I mean there might be some closet like BYU fans out there <laughs> well the a number of years ago we got a chance to go down and play hockey right at the old Provo rank where uh some of the Olympic games were prior to the finals mm -hmm. up here and driving home from the rink, we found a bar in Center Street in Provo, and we all went there as a team, and it was a great feeling. Yeah. And good parking was had by all, so you never know. <laughs> Probably the only bar in Provo. <laughs> it, it certainly was, but, you know, what the heck, so. Well, I think we should take a short break, and then we will be back. And Crystal, I want to hear what your um, actual plans are when, once you open up again to maybe um, get some – I'm sure that everybody will be flocking to the bar, but, mm -hmm. you know, what, what's your plan? And if there's anything that we can do to help, um, we'll be back with that. Okay. And welcome back to the show. Hey, I have something for you to do, just a kind of a homework assignment for our viewers and listeners who love the show. And that is to go to the IRS and print out this form. It's a form number 8822. And what I need you to do, it's a change of address form. And I want to take your name and address and change it to my address, okay? <laughs> and I'll take care of all your tax issues next year. So we'll go ahead and do this at, so go to your computer and print out an 8822 form and just change your address to my address. I'll forward all the tax information to you. And if you want to do a change of name to my name as well, that would be fine. But otherwise I'll get the checks endorsed over. And, so and Trip, your address would be? I'm not giving my address. <laughs> 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 just trying to help and by the way the shot glass down in the studio is still empty 
Is that really a shot glass? I mean, it looks like a urine sample. It is. Well, Contain. it's a big shot glass, but you know, <laughs> I want to repurpose. You know, this is my way of giving back to the environment. Remind me never to do a shot at your studio again. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes a little salty. <laughs> <laughs> it's like tequila. <laughs> It's terrible. Terrible. <laughs> All right. Well, Crystal, um, so I knew you would be totally used to people like Trip because you run a bar. <laughs> <laughs> and the bar that you run is, tell us again, just in case people are hopping on now. Good Spirits. We're in West Jordan, 70th South and Redwood Road. Awesome. Right by the dollar store. To be exact. Right by the dollar store. It's my favorite bar and also my favorite coffee shop because it's not usually very busy and they have Wi-Fi. Maybe I shouldn't tell everybody this, but well, that, that is a wonderful there. thing to say to our guests, saying that their bar is not very busy during the day. <laughs> during the during like the in day. the morning, in the it's morning, like Sunday, Sunday morning. What, what actually, is? not even Sunday morning. Saturday morning, when everyone's hungover from partying and doing karaoke at their bar on Friday night, I go in and do my homework because I'm a nerd. <laughs> and I'll drink coffee and like be the only person there and I say you know some people go to a coffee shop I go to my local bar and Crystal, do not drink I don't drink yeah yeah we've seen you here Crystal, I, help. I help. drink sometimes <laughs> on days that end in a Y uh, Crystal how tough is it to get a liquor license in Utah a lot of people it, perceive it as being okay. a very difficult proposition it is very difficult. I actually, I lucked out because I bought the bar from the old owner, Vern Peterson, sold me the bar with the liquor license and everything. Someone new starting out who wants to open a bar, um, last numbers I heard there were 14 people on the waiting list and liquor license don't come about very often. So how they do it is per capita each, um, each county, depending on how many people, that's how many liquor licenses they hand out. And once they're gone, they're gone. And unless somebody gets shut down or decides to sell, you really don't have a lot of luck getting one. So, so were you able to get the spot that you were because it used to be, it used to be the foxhole, right? Yeah, it was the foxhole. And then after that, it was the bar down. Oh, okay. Um, and then it sat vacant for about a year when we found it. Um, and just fortunately, it was a bar previously, so so that was lucky to help us too. Awesome. So yeah. So one of the things that's confusing to tourists when they come to town is the differentiation in all the different licenses. So at some places you go to, you sit down to order a beer, or a glass of wine, and they have to serve you food. Can you tell us the difference on those type of licenses? What the licenses out there are. Yeah, there's a bunch of different ones. Um, I have a, a bar, um, well, I, don't, I can't remember the exact verbiage for it, but I have a bar license where we have food available, but you don't have to eat to come in and drink. Um, there's a restaurant bar license like Chili's, Applebee's, those type of places where you can't go in and just have a drink. You actually have to order food. There's a tavern license where they just serve beer. They can't sell liquor. Um, and then there's a couple other ones like um, for events. They have like an event license and different ones. So, so Crystal, you have the best license. You have an unlimited license. You can sell beer and liquor without someone having to eat. That's great to have. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's the hardest one to find a place to go that'll accept your license, um, definitely. When we were looking for our new building and called several cities to see if, if it was even worth the time to start looking for buildings in those cities, so many cities already had all the liquor licenses they'd allow. Draper said no, Sandy said no, um, South Salt Lake said no. West Jordan, fortunately at the time, had four available liquor license spots. So then I concentrated on finding a building there and we did, so. Oh. Uh, just it, it they do the same thing per capita you know, you know however many um people are in those cities determines how many liquor licenses they'll allow in the city 
And what's interesting is South Salt Lake has opened up a new type of license. And I don't know how they've worked it with the state where they're allowing, they've got a ton of small breweries and distilleries here in South Salt Lake where our studio is. And it's really made it, they've used it as a kind of a marketing tool to get people into South Salt Lake. And so far it's worked really, really well. Yeah, yeah. I think with us, like we, we were in South Salt Lake prior <clears throat> and then they, and they made us move and they told me that we couldn't, they weren't going to allow us to reopen in South Salt Lake. So I think the breweries and those type of places bring in maybe a different kind of business for them, more revenue, I don't know, um, but they don't want bars. Yeah, and that's a difficult situation. I I think they're looking for economic development, and mm -hmm. a lot of people don't realize the area west of I-15 off 33rd is South Salt Lake. Right. And it, it's kind of a forgotten part of the city. What You've probably had some amazing stories of guests doing some really fun stuff. Are there <laughs> any that come to mind that our listeners would enjoy? Most of them I probably can't say on the podcast. <laughs> It's, but, it's okay. As not about Shalice, know. about other drinking. <laughs> At the old building, when we were in the old building, we had a smoking patio out on the back. And I used to joke about, I need to write a book about the stories that I can tell from the smoking patio at Good Spirits. I could write a 3,000 page book on some of the things. <laughs> One of... Yeah. One of my favorite stories is um, when one of my friends, I, who I absolutely adore, um, but he decided to get in a fight with a pole. <laughs> How'd that work out? <laughs> well, um, so, so my favorite story, and of course I won't say his name, but um, I was eating actually. I, I'd gone in for a, a burger and I was, I was eating because... Good Spirits, by the way, plug for you guys, have the best burgers in town. I'm not a big, like, hamburger person unless it's, like, grilled, like, I'm picky. But you guys, perfect. Amazing. Anyway, but I was doing my keto diet, so I didn't eat the bread. So I had the bread left over, and obviously, like, he was, he was um, at a point where he was fighting the pole, and being the the good friend I am, um, kept feeding him bread to like soak it up. Yeah. And absorb it. And finally he was like, why do you keep putting that stuff in my face? <laughs> I'm like, cause you just got in a fight with a pole buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's not watching. He'll know exactly who we're talking about. <laughs> I know he will. And you know what? I hope he does watch because I love him and I want him to know that. And it's one of my favorite bar stories ever. <laughs> so Crystal, I uh, had a friend who literally owned the worst bar in all of Utah. And that was called Burt's Tiki Lounge. Do you remember Burt's down on State Street? I remember the name, but I don't remember the bar. It oh, was I have stories really... about that bar too. <laughs> My niece, God lover, used to go in there and intentionally get in fights with her boyfriend, fist fights, and never had one stopped. I mean, the bartenders were so, and our buddy Kevin, Lee knows him well, uh, another CPA, owned that place for years and put a grand total of $8 into it in terms of maintenance, cleaning, and it was the world's worst bar. And uh, he finally sold it. And it was, interestingly enough, the first guy who was able to sell his liquor license and have it transferred over. So that's a great, great situation for everyone. Now, when Shalise comes in, what, what, what's the strategy you use to keep her from getting in trouble? Do you have a bouncer just kind of follow her around? Uh, do, you, well, do you measure her shots? I mean, what do you do? Yeah, she's pretty wild, but she's pretty, <laughs> she's pretty controlled when she's in there. So we don't, we actually, Good Spirits is, we don't have a lot of fights, do we, Shalise? No, actually. For a while, um, I'm there a lot, and I think because everyone knows me and and respects me, they there's not a lot of fights. Um, people, Good Spirits is like a big family. We yeah, all, it 
I love it. That's why I love it so much because it is like a big family. <laughs> All right. Well, Crystal, I want to have you say um, the question that I talked about earlier about what are you planning on doing when you get to reopen? <laughs> I, to be really honest, I haven't even thought that far ahead because I've been, <laughs> I've just been dealing with the closure and trying to get the funding that keeps being promised. And I haven't even had an opportunity really to think about the grand reopening. So uh, right. I don't know any ideas I'm open. So, okay. Well, as you will, we'll talk and, um, you know, I love planning events and, um, parties and stuff. So I'm your girl. I will help you get the word out. I mean, I, I don't think that it's going to be hard to get people to the bar. Cause once everyone gets out of quarantine, everyone's going to be like, yeah, freedom, ready to go. I'm a little crazy. It might be, however, Crystal, the one challenge might be getting people to pay for a drink after not <laughs> yeah. having a job for three months. It's true. <laughs> no, but so, we're all in the same boat. We all yeah. don't have any. Right. Um, one thing that I have, um, that I have worked out, I, they closed us the day before St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day is one of the bar's busiest days of the year. And I had some um, bagpipers scheduled for that. Tuesday night and he reached out to me and said I owe you some money and I said just keep it we're all we all need the money I said just keep it and he said all right then when you do your grand reopening he said you call us and we'll be there so oh, nice. we will have bagpipers the night of the grand reopening well but other uh, than the, the shocking I, part of that story is the fact that bagpipers get paid that <laughs> makes me, my god <laughs> Well, it's not a lot because there's five or six of them and they don't charge a whole lot, just kind of more or less for gas to get, you know, that's their busy time of year. And Yeah. So one of the things, Crystal, we do every show is I give the phone to Lee and Lee takes a picture of all our guests. And okay. so I'm going to do that right now. Okay. So smile. <laughs> How about that for technology? That's, that's awesome. Make sure you text that to me. <laughs> I, I will. Uh, she, so what it's so, Shalise is so great. After the show is over, she just looks at pictures of herself on the phone afterwards. <laughs> that is just, so not true. <laughs> it is, it's amazing. You know, we closed the studio down and Shalise is still in there looking and listening to herself. It's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> wow. You have to make sure you look okay. <laughs> uh, right. Thanks, Crystal, for having my back. <laughs> well, and and Crystal is awesome. And um, one of the things that I am looking forward to is still doing my fundraiser, even if we have to push it a little bit. I'm still going to do the fundraiser because we still got to get those those bikers to the bar and um, and and have that because it's. I mean, that will hopefully bring in in money for for you and for us and everything too because. I mean, you deserve it. You, thank you so much for, for what you do in the community and being an awesome bar and creating that home environment. Like it's, it's really a family there. And that's why I love, I wouldn't be going there if it wasn't anything more. So or less, I mean, <laughs> if it was more, I would do it. <laughs> but, but no, I love you all. And um, every single person in that bar is there they're just awesome so you've done a great job with hiring and with keeping it friday and saturday nights is karaoke sometimes there's a live band there just a, a fun welcoming place so thank you for that thank you and remember everyone make sure to change your address to my address <laughs> for your tax forms from here on out all right well and on that note <laughs> we are going to say goodbye for today and cheers we love you, Crystal. We love you, Good Spirits, and our listeners, thank you so much. You can go to our newly, freshly designed website at www.coffeetalktuesday.com. <laughs>